Welcome walkers to this spooky Halloween walk around Covent Garden and there we are looking towards the Royal Opera House. We will be going there later. There is a reluctant dog in front of us and if you look in the distance you can see the bridge that takes the ballet dancers from one building to another. But we're not going that way right now. We're going a different way. is Floral Court. Fans of my channel may remember that I quite like hopping through there. We're going to turn this way. A little bit windy. Deep in, I suppose, old Covent Garden. Covent Garden obviously was genuinely a fruit and vegetable market. Once the Dukes of Bedford, the Russell family, set up home here. The market followed fairly soon. Now, this is supposed to be a spooky walk today. So this is Lazenby Court, and if you look up here, you can just see a sign for the Lamb and Flag pub. It's a very narrow alleyway down through. And in, these, in this era, we tend to be letting people through. You can see some people are coming through as well. So you can see we have the little sign, the lemon flag. Now I have five spooky places to take you today. The lemon flag isn't technically a spooky place, but it does have a bit of a grisly past. Here we go, the lemon flag, and we're going through here. It's got a bit of a grisly past, and behind us is a sign that I can't show you, talking about it, but it literally had a nickname Bucket of Blood. Why would it have a nickname, Bucket of Blood? Answers on the postcard or in comments, or actually, I'm going to tell you now. So I'm going to turn around and show you the Lamb and Flag pub. There we are, on Rose Street. I wouldn't technically, I wouldn't technically put the Lamb and Flag on a spooky tour. But as I said, rather a bloodthirsty reputation due to bare knuckle prize fights in the early 19th century. Oh yeah. Gruesome gladiatorial clashes that earns the pub the nickname Bucket of Blood. As we walk along beautifully named Rose Street with a, a bloody pub behind us. Just joining Garrick Street now. I think you can hear there's a helicopter overhead. It has been following us. Uh, I have a dedicated helper here with me today. Hello, dedicated helper. Hello. Hello. And uh, that helicopter has been rather annoying us actually since we came out of Waterloo. Anyway. We're on Garrick Street now. And it is absolutely jam packed here today. There is the Roundhouse pub. There we are looking up Garrick Street. We are right in theatre land here and Covent Garden. And Covent Garden is really, really busy. It's the end of half term. It's Halloween tomorrow. So it's Saturday today and Halloween is tomorrow. If we were going to be super quick to Covent Garden and some haunted tales that I have prepared for you, we would be going along King Street. We're not going to do that, you know me, has to do something slightly different on a walk. So let's go this way. Let's try and get through here. Very nice. As you can see, crowds and crowds. It is actually really nice to see Covent Garden full of life again. But it does make filming more challenging, I have to say. We are on Bedford Street. If you've seen my Covent Garden walks before, you would know that the, uh, the Duke of Bedford, the Russell family, are responsible for the development uh, of Covent Garden after King Henry, sorry, King Henry VIII, I think. Is it eighth, seventh, eighth, I don't know. Nabbed all this land off the monks at the Abbey of Westminster and the nuns as well and develops uh, Covent Garden and started it becoming what it is today from just a load of fields. We are going into St. Paul's Church in the garden. 
here we are. And if you've seen my Covent Garden walk, you'll know that um, I sort of discovered this much to my surprise last time I was here. The Actors Church, as it's known. As I said, deep in the heart of theatre land. I think you can probably hear me speaking. <laughs> Not necessarily a good thing. And the Actors Church, hmm, is that significant from some of our spooky spots that we will be visiting later? I think it probably is. As you can see, it's quarter past three. Dedicated helper, do you know what the date is today? It must be the 30th. Is it 30 days of September, um, April, June? Yes, no, it's, it's 30th. 30th of October today. 30th of October, Saturday, the 30th of October. Ooh, that's the street performer. Unusual for its uh, licenses for street performers in Covent Garden. We're going to go through here. There's a, what is that? Like a ticket office or old security box or something. A bit like Doctor Who's TARDIS. Here's the square. Lovely. And we are headed this way. So again, Covent Garden through there. Don't think there's actually a route through there that we can take. No, I know there's toilets down there. I've seen people going in and out. We're coming outside. And I see a green plaque with Jane Austen novelist up above there, which I didn't know was there previously. I said she stayed, stayed here, 18 something or another. I haven't got my glasses on. Nice little decorations here. Looking down the street, as I said, it's actually quieter here than it is some of the other places we're going to go. Covent Garden has a pumpkin display, which is what attracted me to here now. Ooh, you want to see some prices? Here we go. Dorset crab, £22.50, £23.50. So if it's 800 grams, £22.50, 900 grams, £23.50. Oysters from Ireland, £3.20. Corlock Bay, Somerset, £3.20. Malden Rock, Essex, £2.50. Maybe they're cheaper because they're from closer by. Taking a guess. <laughs> this is Henrietta Street. We are now headed towards the main spot, Covent Garden Market where I have a spooky tail and some pumpkins and a kind of dog. There we are, Vista of Covent Garden. There is one of the very famous street performers from this area. I'm not quite sure what he's doing. Front of St. Paul's Church here, the Actors' Church. We are headed this way. As we head to the first spooky place that I want to show you, I love this story, it's one of my favourites. Covent Garden, woohoo! In advance of Christmas, I seem to be seeing mistletoe and the big gold balls disco ball etc and here is happy balloon dog super cute i love happy balloon dog castle fine art anyone wants to pop a bit of story around this in comments go ahead here he is let's get out of the way of everybody's pictures now And here we are, right in the central part of the market, where I have Spooky Tail number one. Do you know who used to work here as a porter? Famous actor Bob Hoskins, now the late Bob Hoskins. 
Now, I've mentioned before that Covent Garden used to be a walled garden owned by the Benedictine monks of Westminster Abbey. And there are tales of a haunting around here. So Bob was sent downstairs, down to the basement, to fix a fuse and had the feeling that somebody was watching him. When he finished fixing the fuse, he turned around to see in lights the face of a nun. Yep, the face of a nun was looking at Bob Hoskins as he fixed the fuse. She seemed to be trying to talk to him and was, uh, I think, lifting her hands, palms upwards. That scared the life out of Bob Hoskins. And when he went back to work, one of his colleagues looked at him and said, you just seen one of the nuns, haven't you? To which Bob Hoskins, of course, said, yes, I have just seen one of the nuns. He said, you're going to be lucky, mate. You're going to live a lucky life. And the rest, as they say, is history. Spooky tale number one around Covent Garden. If you look up there, you see Punch and Judy. Established 1787. Covent Garden is reputedly the site of the first Punch and Judy show. Uh, diarised by diarist uh, Samuel Pepys. Hence why we have Punch and Judy stuff all over Covent Garden. So that's tale number one. I see absolutely beautiful bulldog. We are here to see the pumpkin display. Look at this market. It's so busy now. Last time I filmed here, most of the stores were closed. It's fantastic to see it come back to life. People busy. Now we have come to see the pumpkins. Here we go. Nothing says Halloween like some pumpkins. And there you go, nice little display. Now Sandra, I know that you mentioned, oh show me the pics so you can plan your display for Halloween. So Sandra, there you go. Display ideas. Halloween is our favourite type of year, isn't it? Dedicated helper. Yeah. Because we know, what do we know when it's Halloween? It's the start of the cosy season. Yay, start of the cosy season. Start of bonfire night, Christmas, things like that. So, yeah, we love it. Love Halloween. Oh, bless, hello. It's a little bit hot over there. Could try and go down the middle, it's a little bit busy. We'll go around the side, I think. See, isn't it great? It's actually full buzzing, stalls are happening, all that. This is Apple Market. Some lovely t shirts, love that Paddington one. Beautiful pictures. So exciting to see it like this again. Buns and buns, this place is called. Can't do a price check for you. Live performance this end as well. Overlooked by Chanel number five advert. going to play some funky music so I've got to get out of here because there'll be a copyright strike otherwise. 
So this is, I think, South Hall. South Hall, not Savile, just a different place entirely. Okay. Busy, busy, busy. Covent Garden. We are heading this way to spooky spot number two. Hmm, what is spooky spot number two, I hear you asking? Good question, I reply, but before we do that, just want to show you the wee balloon dog again. Got the green one this time, there we go. Please do not touch the installation. So there we are, happy balloon dog, green one this time. And said, pop it in comments, anyone who knows about this installation by Castle Fine Art. Over there is the Royal Opera House. We're coming back there in a sec. We've got somewhere else to go first. So there's the Lon London Transport Museum. Highly recommended. Haven't been in, but everyone I know that's been there highly recommends the London Transport Museum. So before we actually do Spooky Tale number three in front of us at the Royal Opera House, we'll do Spooky Tale number two in this direction. I must admit, I never come out this end of Covent Garden for some reason. For reasons I don't entirely know, I don't really come this way very often. So it's a bit of a change to hop over here. It's a little bit windy this direction. Sorry. John Orkin, thank you for returning to the channel. It's nice to have you back in comments. We had a conversation in comments earlier about the change in atmosphere in places like Wapping and Covent Garden that have all been kind of upgraded, but with a, a certain loss of atmosphere. I know what he means. But it does make it a good, yeah. fun place to hang out as well. Right, we're going to cross here. Okay, here we go. Boulangerie, patisserie, auré. Quite like the look of that one. We are big fans. Cakes, hot chocolates, lattes. And now we find ourselves at Spooky Spot number two. Spooky spot number two is probably the scariest spot on the walk if you're into that sort of thing. Though the Theatre Royal Drury Lane is reportedly, allegedly, the most haunted theatre, not in London, not in the country, but in the world. Yep, this here theatre is supposedly the most haunted one you will ever go to. It's had a mixed history, burnt down, rebuilt again, renovations, survived two world wars, including several near misses during the Blitz. Apparently the ghosts here are too numerous to count. There are so many of them. So one that you might say is a figure in grey crossing the theatre galleries. Now this figure was first seen by a fireman who was evacuating the theatre during a bomb raid. He thought he cleared everybody out, did one last sweep of the auditorium and saw a figure in a grey coat and tricorn drifting along the aisles and through a door. Mysterious. He thought this was an actor, gave chase, went after him, drifting just ahead of him all the time. It's a bit odd that the account is that the, this character, this figure was drifting finally caught up with him, came to a dead end, and the figure went through a crack in the wall. Yep, straight through a crack in the wall. And then stepped out of the wall again and vanished. 
Apparently there was a skeleton found there in a grey coat, tricorn hat, crammed into a tiny hole that had been bricked up. Apparently he was probably stabbed. Identity unknown, thought to be a young nobleman who became fascinated with one of the actresses during the theatre's 1812 renovation and fell foul of her jealous lover. If you're an actor and you see one of the ghosts, it's supposed to be good luck. So as an actor, you might actually want to see one of the ghosts pop up. But here we are, Theatre Royal, Drury Lane, the most haunted theatre in the world. It's also a quite yucky tale about um, Joseph Grimaldi, the father of the modern clown, who, before he died, requested for his head to be painted as a clown, white, and detached from his body. It is widely believed his wish was granted. So people sometimes say there's a floating face that has been known to haunt visitors at the theatre and pop up over people's shoulders. That would scare you, wouldn't it? So there we go. We've done Bob Hoskins over there in Covent Garden. We have done the Theatre Royal Drury Lane behind us. Spooky Tales 1 and 2. What's next? Well, next is the Royal Opera House. So let's head back into Covent Garden. There it is, Russell Street. If you look up there, as I said, the Russell family, instrumental in the development of Covent Garden. Although initially, after Henry VIII gave it to uh, the first Duke of Bedford, he didn't actually do anything with it. The family left it for about 100 years. I think it was the fourth Earl of Bedford that finally sort of upped and did something. Let's cross here. We've had right stormy weather, by the way. Uh, torrential rain. Um, some states of, uh, well, definitely amber warnings for some areas and flooding. There's the helicopter <laughs> still accompanying us. Um, it was rather nice when the sun came out today to film this walk. Rather pleased about that. There you are. Vista of a stormy sky with a helicopter over Covent Garden. Looking good, looking good. And here we are at the Royal Opera House. Just going to direct your attention. Somebody's done a nice little cobweb and skeleton over there. Spiders, stuff like that. I see that bus is advertising bloody drinks. Not swearing, just describing. There we go, bloody drinks. All ready for Halloween. The Royal Opera House is spooky story number three and it's got some recent haunting action going on. Let's go. So the Royal Opera House is home of the Royal Ballet. I showed you earlier their little bridge that they use to cross over the road. And this is a queue that I've realised I don't want to cut through so let me just come through here. Um, and was part of the Covent Garden Flower Market. So it was, it's on the land of the old Covent Garden Flower Market. Loads of ghosts, plenty of them. Its most recent was, was in the 1990s. So there was reconstruction work. Is this actually a queue for Mulberry? <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was a queue for tickets for the Royal Opera House. It appears to be a queue for Mulberry, hey ho. <laughs> it's really busy. I wonder what's happening. Anyway, um, so 1999, construction workers, poor souls, they kept getting hit by flying debris. Bits of brick, bits of metal, 
appear to be flung at them. Throughout the day, scaffolding towers would rock uncontrollably. Heavy objects flying around, apparently directly at the workers on many occasions. There we go, Royal Opera House. So there is theorising going on that it's the work of a resident poltergeist. Even later during a performance, a bucket of bolts was picked up and hurled at a performer from the top of a lighting rig. Some people think the poltergeist is the ghost of a Covent Garden personality, Charles Macklin, who also haunts the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, <laughs> where we just were, the super, super haunted one, he gets around. Some people think it might be the spirit of a disturbed market worker, angry that the Opera House has taken over the old flower market. Perhaps it's something more primal. Covent Garden is on the site of a Saxon settlement, Ludenvik, the first major settlement to rise up in the wake of the Romans abandoning their fortress at Londinium in 46 AD. Could it be one of those? So there you go, go ghostly goings on at the Royal Opera House. And an actor who splits his time in his ghost world between this place and another one. Okay, let's go this way now. As we approach on our way, so we've just done Spooky Tale number three. We are shortly to do Spooky Tale number four of Covent Garden at Halloween. Here we have Stretching Balloon Dog. Red one and a yellow one. Lovely. There we go. Pretty good at their yoga poses, these guys. Lovely. And of course, you could be entering Covent Garden, so they've started with the Christmas decks. Uh, at the moment. Good, we'll be back for Christmas, don't you worry. This area, this little bit is actually called Covent Garden and this is Jane Street. We're going to head up Jane Street now. No, I don't have it. I do all the shows from here. Here we are, telephone boxes and the Apple Store, which also often has a queue actually. Seem to have one today. Everyone's getting dressed up for Halloween, which is lovely. We haven't done our decks yet. We'll be putting up our Halloween decorations tomorrow. Got a few pumpkins, but our usual pumpkin supplier, well, they'd run out, haven't they? So we didn't get our usual pumpkins yesterday. So I've got some from Sainsbury's instead. Busy, busy, busy. Somebody's actually got a dog balloon there. I've been in one of these pubs, but I can't remember which one. I don't know what that says. Can't distinguish them one from the other. So really, really busy here. So again, there's the bridge that the ballerinas and the ballet dancers take. And we kind of started just along there looking at the Lamb and Flag pub. The blood and gore bare knuckle fighting pub, not this one, the one we started at. Nags head. And we are approaching spooky spot number four, our penultimate Halloween spooky place. And that is Covent Garden Tube Station. What's that you're saying? 
I hear you ask. Yep. Covent Garden Tube Station. Now, Covent Garden is so popular. Is it like 44 million visitors a year or something? One of the, literally one of the most popular tourist places in the world, Covent Garden, just along the road from Leicester Square. And loads of people take the journey via the underground. And it's actually faster to walk once you've gone down, waited for a train, got on the train, got off the train, might as well walk. Um, shortest trip on the whole London Underground, just 260 metres long, only takes 20 seconds. Now, why am I hanging around outside a tube station telling you ghost stories? Well, because ever since it was built, part of the Piccadilly line in 1907, strange stories, strange rumours have been told. In fact, the local priest protested against the digging of the Piccadilly line because he thought it would open up a gateway to hell. That might not be exactly what's happened, but before the station was there, there were shops, including a bakery. The bakery was got rid of for the tube station. Where are you? And the bakery was supposedly one of the finest in the area. What's that got to do with a haunting, you might ask? Is the owner of the bakery sad that it was closed down? Not quite. There was an actor, William Terrace. So William Terrace, the actor, was a passionate philanthropist, very much involved with the uh, Actors Benevolent Fund, but met a terrible death at the Adelphi Theatre on the Strand when a young actor he'd been helping uh, basically stabbed him to death. But what's that got to do with the bakers at the spot that Covent Garden Station is now on? It's because this was William Terrace's favourite place to come for his baked items. So William Terrace used to come here for his baked goods at the bakery and it is now believed that he is the person that haunts Covent Garden Station. The shade of a handsome man in a hat and cape has been seen walking through the walls of Covent Garden Tube Station. Last seen supposedly in 1972. So I don't know if he's come to terms with the loss of the bakery. But there you go, our penultimate spooky story. Covent Garden tube station. <laughs> We're on Long Acre here. There's a pub along here that Charles Dickens used to frequent that was the uh, home of the start of the British Football Association and also I understand Charles Dickens became a pigeon fancier as a result of attending said pub. Can't remember the name of the pub right now. Okay, so it is the last spooky spot on our tour that's coming up now. Hope you've enjoyed them so far. Anyone recognise where we are? We are approaching Seven Dials. Kind of in Seven Dials-ish. Seven Dials uh, <laughs> was built to kind of compete, compete by, I think, is it Thomas Neal, I think his name was, kind of, he sort of thought, well, Covent Garden's doing well, let's have another nice area. So he built Seven Dials uh, around a centre point, a, a, a sundial in the middle. Uh, that's not the original one that we're about to see, the original's now in Weybridge. <laughs> But it didn't work. And I think uh, the original Mr. Neal was N-E-A-L-E, -E, whereas these days we seem to spell it N-E-A-L. And actually this area um, became some of the greatest slums in all of London. Here we go. I don't know what we're looking at over there, what that building is in the distance. Anyway, I'm going to cross. So this was literally one of the greatest slums you'll ever meet. I think uh, Charles Dickens based um, Nicholas Nickleby in this area. 
so horrified he was by the conditions. And Agatha Christie set the Seven Dials Mystery, 1929 here as well. So terrible slums, dodgy reputation, not a place you necessarily want to hang out. Oh, blimey, that bird just nearly hit me in the head. Literally felt a bird touch the top of my head as it landed. We're approaching the centrepiece sundial column, which has six faces, each one a sundial, with the pillar itself forming a sundial, which tells the time around the crossroads as the day goes by. Now, as I said, this is not the original one you can see there in the distance. That got moved because of the amount of undesirables congregating underneath it. I think that was like in the 1700s, not long after it had gone up. So why are there ghosts in this area? Why would I be telling you a spooky tale? It was due to a rumour, supposedly. So in the 18th and 19th century, there was a rumour that the Earl of Bedford had been buried underneath this column. And with him, in his burial spot under the column, was a hall of gold and treasures. This was a rumour that got very badly out of control. So much so that the authorities felt they had to do a public exhumation just to show that there was no actual person or treasure buried beneath it. And there wasn't. It is said that the ghosts that you will see in this area at night are the ghosts of the drunks, the fools and the chancers who each took themselves out to the poorly lit crossroads of Seven Dials on moonless nights to try and make themselves rich. They came to dig up the treasure. Now, back then, these were busy roads for carriages, horse-drawn carriages, things like that. So the drivers have said horse-drawn carriages, they weren't going that slowly and they weren't that bothered about slowing down. So anybody that was there, late night treasure diggers, probably just by some kind of candlelight or something, they just got killed by an early form of moving vehicles. So they say that to this day, drivers going through seven dials on moonless nights may see momentary glimpses of figures rising out of dark holes in the road and vanishing as the headlights fall on them. There you go, your final, bit and final spooky tale of Covent Garden on Halloween. I do hope you enjoyed my Halloween trip around Covent Garden area with some spooky tales of haunted theatres and, um, and buried treasure. <laughs> See you next time, bye bye.